she actually did fight with the dog that I'm going to show you next oh. uh, through a fence when she escaped, and they fought with each oh. other through the fence. God. Uh, and she was able to do this damage through a fence. This oh. dog grabbed her foot and bit her on the foot. But she did this oh. dog. Um, her name is Precious. We euthanized her about two to three weeks ago. Um, she's been in and out of shelters, we think, for her whole life. Um, oh, she was in our shelter for over a year. And oh. the argument is that any dog will fight through a fence. Any dog would do this, that we shouldn't negatively score a, a dog that does this what do you oh my god ab, ab, this is, no um th this is what happens like when people only see you know fighting stock guarding breeds and mixes in the shelters who have such dog aggression and such arousal and frustration problems then this becomes normal this is not normal this is not what dogs do dogs will fence fight and 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 some dogs will fence fight a normal pet dog will fence fight, and there's no contact. Yeah. It's all like rah, 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 all all display to grab. You can see every incisor, tooth, and the canines. Okay, we should probably pull it back up again because I got rid of it so fast. It's just disturbing to see because it's I so unfair that, to either dog. I mean, I know that um, you know the dog who got bit. She did fight at the fence. She was in a very large yard. She was in a yard that is you know, huge, um, hundreds of feet long and 50 feet wide or more. And she could have gone anywhere. She did not have to fight right. at the fence, but she chose to, to fight this dog through the fence. Um, Can you see all the incisor marks on the bottom nostrils there? Those are incisors. And then the top has a canine rip. I mean, this is just, um, oh, it's so awful. Ugh. Oh. So can you imagine uh, these dogs being your neighbor and if your dog innocently stuck its face under the fence or up to the fence, what would happen? Or even if you're walking this dog on the street and she sticks her face near chain link or under, you know, yeah. stockade. It's the, um, the case in Utah, in my home state, of the two Siberians next door neighbors and they went under the plastic stockade fence to grab the five-year-old boy, and in one one bite, amputated his hand. And people were saying, "Oh, well, he thought, you know, he thought the, you know, the kid was a toy." And it's like, dogs don't even do that with toys. But to sever a hand like this level of bite pressure, grab, hold, bite, shake is, it's so um, monstrous. It's monstrous, and. It is not normal dog behavior. And we also have to look at it like when, when these are your, this is your genetics, this dog, and these are the genetics. They don't belong. There is no place where they can, um, where they're able to be um, with access to their instincts because they're not bred as dogs. There's no way to fulfill them. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a cruelty to yeah. keep them alive. There's no way to provide the enrichment that they would really need in a safe way and, and, and not humanely for anyone around them. And this is Precious, who we euthanized. Okay. This one shows like her significant portions of the day, the stereotypic kind of pacing. I have a dog near the fence. And she uh, is 12 or 13 years old and just slams herself up against the this is a cruelty. This is a cruelty to animals. Cross the line. Um, I call. I call this a behavioral emergency. I mean, I, I know she was already euthanized, but stereotypical behaviors are the sign that the dog has lost quality of life. And the studies from the zoo community is the brain rewires. So she's rewiring, forming new neural pathways in this. Um, this is a response to an abnormal environment. This is a cruelty to animals. There's not a person who would go to a zoo and watch a, a, you know, a gorilla doing this or a, or a wolf pacing and lunging and circling over and over and over again and say, oh, that's okay. It's, it's not okay. It's not okay. This is cruelty to animals in the highest form. Yes, yes. We are not exempt from cruelty to animals just because we are animal shelters fighting against cruelty. 
Yeah. So this, um, you know, it's hard to watch. It's hard yep. to have to watch. And I think it really stresses out our adoptable pets. You bet. To, to, to watch um, this and to hear her barking. And, it's so um, unfair to her, to everyone. It's so cruel. Yeah. Oh. So this is her with uh, the fake dog. This is precious. This is precious, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and the last time, like, she was surrendered. What was the reason? Boy, resource guarding, too. That level, do you see that level of class being grabbing? So you've got, and, and this is the uh, topic of my webinar next Saturday, um, like assessments with dogs and the combination of low threshold dog-to-dog -dog aggression with low threshold resource guarding. It's the formula for this. And this is how people get bitten trying to save their own dogs. Oh, yeah. um, and this dog will let go of a dog or maybe they've already killed the, the uh, person's pet and they will turn on, um, they'll turn on the person fighting them. And again, they're, oh. Yeah. So she was surrendered, but do, um, I know she was in and out of shelters. <clears throat> she was surrendered uh, one time a few years ago to a different animal shelter because of an eviction. She sat okay. in that animal shelter for over six months and then the owners came back for her and they waived her fees wow. and stuff and let her, the owners take her back. And then a few years later, they surrendered her to our shelter because they said that they were evicted. Um, and she has sat at our shelter, you know, ever since for, for a year or two. Um, and she is severely uh, dog aggressive. She also, in more recent times, if somebody goes to greet her and you go to stick your hand out, she snarls and takes a shot at your hand. So um, one thing that the people, you know, we had, a, we had some backlash after we euthanized her. We had a yeah. protest, candlelight vigil, all this stuff. They said that she was nice in the videos that they that they've seen and, and some of them came to the shelter and hung out with her and she was so sweet and good in her videos and she's a good dog she just needs to go to a house without other animals and again like what happens when this dog gets out of their home what happens when she goes to the veterinarian and the owner walks her through the door what happens and how do you provide this dog quality of life there's no way she can ever run free um, she can't go for walks and so she would be confined to somebody's home and yard. She will get loose because she will go stir crazy because it's no life for a dog. Um, and there's nothing, I'm sorry, there's no sociability. She's not sweet. The, the, the use of the word sweet to describe this dog is a misnomer. Sweet is a gentle, ears back, affectionate. It's, it's a completely different. This is her at 12 or 13. Yeah, oh my God. Oh my God. She's like, oh, here we go. Bye. 
Yeah, and there's the B line. The head doesn't move. Oof, oof. So there's a gun. So how do we know that she is not playing? It doesn't matter whether she's playing or not. Dogs have killed children by, pl over, by playing with arousal with no sociability. And dogs have killed other dogs. It's game. They're game bred. This is um, the, this, first of all, it's not play. Play is reciprocal. Um, but second of all, it doesn't matter. The, what she's showing, her motor patterns, all of her behaviors are to kill. <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> if she's doing that because she's not doing it out of anger, um, she's not doing it because the other dog tried to, you know, tell her who's boss. She's not doing it because another dog gave her some message. It doesn't matter. It's, um, these dogs do not belong in our communities. And I'm telling you, um, when shelters place these dogs or send them to rescue and they get loose and they hurt somebody else's dog or a person, um, the liability is emotional liability, financial liability. It's so irresponsible. It, it, um, it's got to stop. This is like all in the name of, um, uh, it, this is a complete lack of knowledge of normal dog behavior and a complete lack of knowledge of the limitations of behavior modification and of dog training. Yeah. So the, you know, um, and so I, I feel like everyone at, a, at an animal shelter or at a rescue or anyone who's volunteering should be knowledgeable about the limitations of behavior modification and sit in on behavior sessions with a variety of different trainers who would say, you know, would say like at best, um, we would manage, you can't ever take this out of this dog. And, um, and you know, management isn't without, without um, event. They would understand that if